Before importing the media, we should get used to being organized with our project. I will color code the media panel so that we can differentiate between the batch compositing and reels editing. In this tutorial, we will be dealing with reels editing only. We will right click in the media panel and select a color for each area. We will also create a new library. Rename it to Mophy Beginner's Workflow and create subfolders by right clicking in the media panel and creating new folders. We will name them Animatic, Offline, and Media. While we can import media into Flame by dragging and dropping files from the Finder, the correct workflow is to import the files into Flame via the Media Hub. This way, we also have a greater overview of the media. We will navigate to the Media Hub tab below the Editing panel, where the disks attached to our computer are displayed. We will double-click on the disk containing the media we want, in my case, Lazy Flame, and navigate to the folder named Flame 2017 Beginner's Workflow, and then look through EDL and Offlines and Sources folders. The thumbnails of the available clips are displayed. We can select and scrub through the clips or view them in the preview window. The preview window displays the clip info and metadata of the selected clip. We can see in a clip info that our clips are tagged as unknown because we selected legacy color management. We can play the clips full screen by clicking on the double arrow button. We click Escape to get back to the original preview window. If we wish, we can import just part of the clip by setting in and out points in the preview window. In the editing area of the Media Hub, there are several tabs. General, Format Specific Options, AAF and XML Import Options, EDL Import Options, and Jobs, where we can set some parameters on how we wish to import the media. In the General tab, we will switch Cache On, and Flame will create intermediate files based on the format we selected when we set up the project, Apple ProRes 422HQ. These cached intermediate files will be stored in the media storage and we will be using them rather than the original linked files on our drives. We also have an option to switch on proxies, but we will leave proxies off as we are not going to use proxies in these tutorials. When importing files, we can select the resolution of the file as same as source or to any other presets available, or create a custom resolution. In our case, we will keep resolution at 1920 by 1080. We will also leave bit depth, scan mode, and pixel ratio set to same as source. If we are importing stills, we can choose the duration of a still frame, currently set at the default length of one frame. We have a lot of options to change the color space to that of different cameras, displays, data, and so on. As with legacy color management, we have a choice of two workflows. One, import and convert all media into a common color space. Or two, import in native color space and only convert when required. As we will convert only when needed, we will leave the setting on from File or Rules. In Format Specific Options tab are options to change the key code, clip options or metadata of a particular clip when importing it. We can change the frame rate of the clip. If I click on a clip, it will show us its format, QuickTime. If I was to click on a sequence file, like TIFF, DPX or EXR, we would be able to choose to import individual frames rather than the whole sequence. Any changes we make to the settings of the clip, we can save and load at a later stage.
we will select the animatic folder and bring in the animatic. Select the offline folder and bring in the offline. When we navigate to sources folder, each clip is in its own folder. In order to see all the clips, we should switch on scan subdirectories. We will select the first clip and shift select the last clip to bring all the media in. All our media is now in the library. In the next video, we'll be looking at the desktop and timeline editing in Flame. For more in-depth tutorials on the individual Flame tools, please go to Autodesk Flame Learning Channel on YouTube.